If you're over 40, you might remember a little TV show that captured the essence of Miami coolness in the 1980s. Miami Vice starring Don Johnson as Sonny Crockett and a couple of his boats. Of course, the 38-foot scarab got most of the glory in the show, but there was another boat there, a sailboat. And it's a sailboat that you can buy today for about 60 grand. 42 feet of Florida and Bahamas cruising that's that cheap. Surely there must be a catch, and there is. Stay tuned. At Practical Sailor, we like to give you the positive side of most boats and would never purposely set out to discredit any boat, especially a famous one. But we also must be honest in our reviews and remain pragmatic. The Miami Vice sailboat is an Endeavor 42, and we like Endeavor. Typically heavy coastal boats with lots of room inside. What more could the aspiring Florida to Bahamas cruiser ask for? Well, as it turns out, there are a few things more. The Endeavor Yacht Corporation was an American boat builder based in Largo, Florida, founded in 1974 by John Brooks and Rob Valdez. The company specialized in the design and manufacture of fiberglass sailboats. The company went out of business in 1986 when it was bought by Bob Vincent and built sailing cats and power cats from 36 feet to 48 feet until his passing in 2019. The boats are very active in owners groups. Brooks and Valdez met while working for Vince Lazara at Gulf Star Yachts. To assist their fledgling company getting started in the boat building business, Ted Irwin of Irwin Yachts gave them the molds for the 1970 Irwin 32 in exchange for a small number of shares in their new company, Endeavor. The molds were modified by Dennis Robbins, who was responsible for Endeavor's production and design work at the time. The rework design was called the Endeavor 32, and about 600 examples were produced starting in 1975, giving the company an early market success. Irwin gave them a shortcut. After that success, Brooks and Valdez needed a second design, and they found it in a weird place. They located an abandoned boat, an old Creekmore design 34 foot on the Miami River. It was modified by Robbins by adding three feet in the middle of the boat, and it became the basis for the 1977 Endeavor 37, which was produced in a sloop, a cutter, and a yawl. The company sold 476 examples of that boat from a boat they found in the river the larger Endeavor 43 followed in 1979. Those three designs were all optimized for sailing in the waters of the Florida Keys and the Bahamas Islands and emphasized shoal drafts over good windward performance. Construction was all fiberglass woven roving and multi-directional chopped strand mat with polyester resin and plywood for cores. Robbins left the company to go work for Irwin Yachts and Bob Johnson became the main designer for the next few years. Starting in 1980, the emphasis shifted to improving sailing performance along with new construction materials and techniques. The 1981 Endeavor 40 was designed for the owner cruising market, but also with an eye to establish sales in the yacht charter market as well. This drove designs that were faster and more comfortable. When America's Cup designer Johan Valentin came on board, things changed. Valentin went on to design the Endeavor 42, and by 1985, the company was producing center cockpit boats for cruising and charter use. Construction was changed using end grain balsa wood in the hulls above the waterline areas and plywood for more stressed parts of the boat. The 42 went on to become the Miami Vice sailboat. And true, the boat can sail with its tall rig and its inboard shrouds. It can even beat to windward with a little bit of authority, but with a displacement to length ratio of more than 300, the Endeavor 42 is a pure cruiser designed to get its crew from here to there in relative comfort. The other performance drawback is the four and a half foot draft. When working to windward, the keel simply can't provide the lift of a deeper, higher aspect fin keel. However, you'd be hard pressed to find anyone complain about that shallow draft in Florida or the Bahamas or the other shoal draft waters where this boat is usually found. Perhaps its biggest attraction though is its price, less than a hundred grand, I found one for 60, to have a second home on the water at 42 feet. In terms of ergonomics, the E42 is fairly efficient, but it's a big boat and the loads are such that older sailors may want to budget an extra five 
to 15 grade and upgrades that'll reduce the friction in the running rigging and sail handling. Because of the high mast height and bimini top, routines like flaking and tending the mainsail require a little bit more nimbleness than a typical aft cockpit cruiser, but Lazy Jacks and a self-stowing mainsail cover can fix that. The jib sheet winches are led to self-tailing Lumar 44s that probably should be one size bigger, but the real sticking point, at least on the boat that we got on, was setting and lowering that mainsail using the lines led aft to the cockpit. A rigid boom vang, a self-stowing mainsail system like a stack pack, a mac pack, or a Dutchman, new turning blocks and efficient sail slides, perhaps Dutchman strong track, would make setting the main a lot easier. The Lumar main sheet traveler on our test boat could also benefit from an upgrade or at least a rebuild if you want to make your life easier. Now let's talk about actually using it as a Bahamas cruising boat. Passages on deck, fore and after, clear and wide. It's easy to run up to the bow when you need to. And the fore deck allows plenty of room to store even an 11 foot rib. Although many owners on these boats have added davits off the stern. It's a heavy enough boat to do that. The design came with two different transoms though. Older models have a flat transom. The post 1989 models have an extended transom with an early iteration of the now common sugar scoop transom. Owners unanimously prefer the newer boat with the scoop design, which makes it easier to load and unload from the dinghy or climb aboard when you're swimming. The cockpit can be fully enclosed for bad weather sailing. The boat that we sailed on had a dodger and side panels. This protected us from the elements, but still allowed easy reach of the main sheet aft. Our test boat had three head sail tracks, two outboard and one inboard. The E42 is a walkthrough center cockpit design inside, meaning that you can access the aft cabin without going up onto the deck. This arrangement reduces the risk of down flooding, simplifies main sheet runs, and is easier on the knees, heart, and self-esteem. The walkthrough design presents two major challenges, creating enough headroom in the passage aft without building a wedding cake, and locating the passage where it causes the least interference with life below. Endeavour accomplishes that first feat without much fuss by eliminating cockpit lockers entirely. However, the passageway is also the galley, an arrangement that might raise hackles of the cook, especially if the first mate is the forgetful type always needing to squeeze past to retrieve his reading glasses. The galley's oversized top-loading freezer fridge is overkill for most cruising needs, and the insulation is builder's grade. But the size is easily reduced and insulation can be added. If you're an avid spear fisherman and this boat has a gen set, you'd be able to feed yourself through a nuclear winter because of the size of this freezer. One of the biggest advantages of the walkthrough design is excellent access to the engine, which sits directly beneath the cockpit and can be reached through doors on either side of the engine room from the galley or the aft cabin head. In fact, except for the fuel tank and some wiring and scupper hoses, Access to all of the boat's key systems is commendable. The layout is pretty standard for a center cockpit boat. One forward double V berth, one SETI to starboard, one double convertible SETI port or an L shape or circular dinette, and one Queen Island bed aft with its own head. The forward berth has a five foot hanging locker and three drawers under the berth. The owner's cabin in the back has two hanging lockers and six drawers, three per side. The guest head forward has two doors, one from the berth and one from the main saloon. However, these doors, as well as the forward cabin door, tend to get jammed as the rigging and mass loads are transferred into this area of the interior. Reinforcing the doors with an aluminum frame, as some builders do, would help prevent the jamming, but most owners just plane the door size and carry on. Given the signs of bulkhead flexing we saw on three separate boats, we're not surprised that leaks at the mast partners and shroud chain plates are pretty common complaints. The interior is built of mainly wood with pan liners for the two heads. The floor timbers are bonded in place with woven roving and the plywood sole is screwed onto these long longitudinal and transverse timbers. A teak and holly floor is then bonded on top of that. The varnish and joinery on the boat we tested was above average and the owners seemed generally pleased with the appearance and layout. These stick built approaches lend themselves really well to modification. The boat is very well ventilated too for the tropics. Multiple Bomar opening ports, two large overhead Atkins and Hoyle hatches in the main cabin, and one large hatch over each double berth provide ample breeze at anchor, especially at anchor in the trade winds. The lack of door aids though speaks to its island hopping nature rather than ocean crossing aspirations. The most common engine is a 62 horse Perkins 4154 diesel engine with 2.5 to 1 reduction gear from 83 to 86. 
Most later model boats though, 87 to 91, have the Yanmar 4JH. The fuel tank located in the keel beneath the engine is a problem. It's built of marine grade aluminum and it's exposed to condensation and water trapped in the bilge that can cause pinholes to develop over the years. If the boat has not yet had the tank replaced, you should budget between ten and twenty thousand dollars were the prices we were quoted by owners. Most people cut the tank out from above, which requires major deconstruction. The Endeavour 42 enjoys a good breeze, and although a cruising chute can keep it moving in light air, most cruisers opt to motor sail when the winds get light. We averaged about 6.3 knots on our passage from Sarasota, Florida to Havana, sailing conservatively in winds ranging from 8 to 17 knots. Being shorthanded, we reefed the main at night, but we're still able to maintain between 5.5 and 6 knots. If you're willing to use the engine when needed, you can plan on making 6.5 knots while burning about 1.5 to 2 gallons per hour. The 75 gallon fuel tank is small compared to similar models and limits your range to about 300 miles under power. This boat balances well in 12 knots or less, but once the wind picks up and the boat heels past about 15 degrees, the weather helm sets in. The weather helm is not as extreme as it is on other designs and is usually remedied by reefing the main to reduce the healing a little bit. Owners also report that a well cut main and a flattening reef will also help ease the weather helm. Tacking angles were 45 degrees or worse. Our best speed off the wind was 7.4 in about 17 knot trades. The boat's favorite heading is with wind just after the beam. The Endeavour 42's modest price and excellent support from an active owners association makes it a good choice for a single-handed sailor with the guts to do a major refit. Families should concentrate on an already refurbished model. Its heavy displacement would seem to lend it to ocean voyaging and at least one Endeavour owner routinely takes the offshore route between New England and the islands. Nevertheless, there are enough shortcomings in this design and its systems to recommend it principally for coast-wise sailing and island hopping. Price-wise, there are only a few other boats in the same range that match up in terms of aesthetic, tonnage, and interior volume. If you're looking to live like Sonny Crockett, the Endeavour 42 will put you on the right track very quickly. Compare it with the Whitby 42, the Brewer 12.8, the Brewer 44, Hunter Passage 42, the Gulf Star 44, and the CSY 44, and maybe even the Out Island 41. If you like this video, please don't forget to hit subscribe and click that little bell so YouTube notifies you of a new video when we release one. Also, give this video a thumbs up and let us know in the comments what boat would you like to see here on Practical Sailor.